What's up? Welcome to TubRepairStore.com. Today we're going to be installing a large wall repair kit. We will not be using the mesh tape because there's no hole on this repair. Like and subscribe if you like this content. If you have any questions, comment below or give us a call. Hopefully we can save you a ton of money. It's a 532nd uh, drill bit. I'm just going to drill a hole on either end of this crack. Hey, little, little bit in there. Okay, I've got 120 grit sandpaper connected to my vacuum. Uh, I'm just going to scuff the area around here. Just some acetone. I'm gonna clean it off, make sure it's dust free before I add my my cutty glass. Okay, so I've got my respirator on. Um, I'm using my cream hardener, my glass putty, and it just takes a little bit. This should be plenty. Okay, so I feathered out the edges. It's a little thicker here where the repair is. Uh, now I'm gonna take acetone, kind of clean up some of this excess. We've got to try and keep that pretty clean. You know, a lot of people will put, you know, they put tape around the area and stuff, but I find it easier and better um, to actually just kind of feather it out like this. Um, that way you, you reduce your likelihood of having hard lines. So that is my preference. It has worked well for years. And just kind of clean that up. I am going to sand around that so it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Now I'm going to let this set up. I'm probably going to warm it with a blow dryer. Uh, but I'm going to let it set up for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to mix my color. Now, in between steps, always clean off your, your stuff. You're going to use this putty spreader again. Uh, so you do want to have that clean uh, when it comes time. If you did a second coat on here, or maybe you do, well, you're going to end up doing the finished putty. You're going to use this anyway. So try to keep your stuff clean. Don't get in a rush. Take your time. It's going to, it's really going to help you if you just be patient while you're going through this and keep your stuff clean. Okay, so I am going to blow dry this. Um, I, want it, I want it to heat up a little bit. Um, it's naturally going to heat up some, uh, but you want to feel it heat up. Uh, make sure it's all going to be able to chemically react. Um, and then once it's cooled off and it's dry and not, not too tacky to the touch, uh, then you can do it generally about 30 minutes. So I'm going to blow dry it, get it warmed up. Uh, you do want all of your products and any project that you do with our kits, uh, you do want the, the project area and the project surfaces and the products themselves uh, to be between, you know, 65 and 80 degrees. Um, you know, generally normal room temperatures are good, but if it's cold outside and your kit's been outside and it's kind of cool, let it warm up to room temperature before you start the project. Okay, so I always like to start out, especially if I'm not 100% sure, um, I'll start out and just do each of the colors so it's like you can actually see it better in the shadow. And then, you know, we've got gloss white, gray white, gold white, and almond. Uh, to me, it looks like the gray white's a little too gray, but the gold's a little too light. This tub does have a hint of gray to it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this gold white as my base, and I'm going to add a little bit of the gray to it. Uh, so here we go. Okay, so you use acetone to wipe off your swatches. So it comes off pretty easily. There's, you know, it's just the resin. It's not the catalyst, the reducer. It has a setup like that. So uh, just wipe it off. 
The one thing to be aware of is if it is a plastic tub, this is a standard fiberglass tub. So, you know, acetone's not gonna hurt that surface. Uh, plastic tubs, uh, it can make this, the surface sticky and it can kind of dull the shine on a plastic tub or an acrylic tub. So do be aware of that. What I recommend is, you know, try it down in like a discreet corner. Take some acetone on a paper towel, kind of wipe it in a corner and see if the surface gets sticky. Uh, you want to be real careful when you're doing that. In fact, you probably want to match your swatches uh, right near the repair area. So when it's all said and done, that'll be covered up. So, okay, so I'm going to... I'm only going to need about one ounce of resin here. This is not a very big repair. One ounce is going to be more than enough. Uh, but I like to have one ounce because that makes measuring my catalyst and my reducer easier. So uh, I'm going to do just a little less than one ounce of the gold white. Um, it's always easier to darken your resin than it is to lighten it back up. Uh, so uh, I know this gray white is darker than it needs to be so it's not going to take too much uh, I'm going to add just a little bit here probably about an eighth of an ounce uh, then we're going to stir that up and see how it works okay it's all stirred up here just got a little darker be sure to wipe your stick off get any of that you know, you don't want any direct color on there. You want the mixed color only on there. And you just dab a little on there. Spread it out. And then I always dry it. And the only trailer. Well, that is, that is too dark, so I'm actually going to add some gloss white just to lighten that up. Okay, this is gloss white. Just going to lighten that up a little bit. And stir it. Okay, and cut it stores and check it. Sure, the finger is dry. Okay, that one is just a little light, um, so I am going to go back with a little bit of gray white, not much at all. I'm just going to add just a little bit, just a tiny bit there, and you don't want to just, you know, take your time when you're matching this, um, and then you. You don't want to be bouncing back and forth too much. It'll just, you know, add a lot of extra time. Now, keep in mind, I've got that glass putty setting up, so I have plenty of time. Um, you know, we're probably only about, I don't know, 15 minutes into that. So, um, there's really no rush here. And just take your time doing this. Uh, matching the color and getting your color prepped uh, while the glass putty is setting. That is going to make the project go um, quite a bit faster, actually, if you can do that. Um, so that's the order we put it in. Um, you are more than welcome, though, if you don't want to do it all together, you can, you know, take a break, let your glass putty set up, uh, and then sand that down, and then finish your repair, and then focus on the color only. So, okay, so we're still just a hint light, so I'm going to do a little bit more. Now this is just, you know, just take your time on this. You don't want to just add a ton. It's better to add a little, do another swatch, you know, than really be bouncing back and forth and wasting all of your material. You know, I'm really only just slightly over one ounce of resin here. So just, you know, I'll, I'll ha you'll have plenty of material. You got about two ounces of every color. Uh, so, you know, right now the gold white is the main one. And I won't be using any more of that. Um, and probably used about a quarter ounce of what? Gray watch. We'll try that. And then always dry your swatch in between. Um, always dry it for about, you know, 15 seconds. Still a little light. 
Um, so, you know, we're just going to go a little bit more, gray white, to keep it up. I did a little bit more that time. And you don't have to worry about, you know, sanding that glass putty. We can go over 15 minutes. You can let that stuff set up overnight. Um, I've had people ask me, you know, can they take a break? Is it okay to shower with the glass putty like it is? Uh, yeah, you know, it really is. I just, you know, wipe it dry whenever you're done showering. Um, and, you know, let it dry out before you get back to uh, the project. But yeah, it won't be any problem. In fact, we, we did one just the other day like that. Had some cleaners come in, uh, clean the entire tub. And then uh, I came back and finished out sanding the glass button. So, get a little long by the swatches here. So I'm just going to wipe those off. You really just kind of rub that swatch until it gets a little sticky and then it'll thicken up and give you a real solid coating there um, so just keep wiping it until it kind of dries up a little bit that is still just a little light maybe it is a little more gray white I'm pushing about two ounces here and you know in reality and probably you know you can take different routes to get to the the right solution here um, this one I'm I, maybe I could have done gloss white to gray white and or stay away from the fold that may be drawing me off we may have to try that let's see just get this gets us closer It was a little better. And kind of look around on each different color angle. Uh, that one's kind of bouncing. It's like it's perfect. And then a different angle, it's a little light. A little different angle, it's a little dark. Um, I think that's gonna work. Uh, so we're going to go with that one for now. Okay, we're going to do our pre valve sprayer here. So just take this apart, get that straw out of there. Now take that cap off that straw. It's going to prevent it from clogging. It's more prone to clog if you don't take that cap off. So I take that cap off, and then I'm just kind of tuck it in here and set it aside. Now, do the resin, and I'll wipe all this up, so don't worry about that. Take your resin, we've got measuring deals here. Uh, I'm just gonna pour the resin to one ounce. Uh, that's really all I'm gonna need. Uh, so, and I'll just save the extra resin. In case I need to do it again, just save that resin um, until you're happy with the project. So I'm gonna pour this out to one ounce. And then always remember it's four parts resin one part catalyst and two parts reducer so I'm gonna add a quarter ounce of catalyst to my one ounce of resin okay and then I'm gonna add half an ounce of reducer to my one ounce of resin now the reducer that kind of thins it down uh, you don't want to be short on a reducer because it'll probably your your solution will be a little too thick. Uh, but you can go a little over, so um, that one's not as important and uh, being perfect. But I, I'm still stick to the 412. Um, the catalyst, you definitely want to try to have that one um, pretty well spot on. If you're gonna miss, you want to miss a little over, then a little under, um, and then just stir it up. Be sure to get. The resin off the bottom of this jar and get it real stirred up. Make sure you're 
you're good to go before you get done. Make sure you're scraping the bottom, scraping the walls. Um, get it mixed up, because if it tries to, it gets in a little blob of like just plain resin, it's gonna clog your deal. Uh, another thing is, you don't need to fill this thing all the way up. See, I've got uh, about 1.75 ounces of product here. Uh, you don't need to uh, fill this all the way up. In fact, I think that's what causes a lot of people problems is they uh, underestimate how far the red, the, the solution will go. Um, and they try to fill this thing way up. It is more prone to clog if you have this jar completely full. So, uh, you know, just, you know, generally, one ounce of resin is gonna be plenty for this. Uh, if you get two ounces of resin, that is going to spray a big repair. So, I generally don't do more than two ounces of resin. If you add your catalyst and reducer, uh, gets you to about three and a half ounces of product. That's about as high as I generally like to have this jar full. So, anyway, um, now reassemble your pre valve. And one thing you want to be aware of on the pre valve this is the breathing hole. You always want that facing you. Uh, and then you have your spray nozzle. You want that facing away from you. So, breathing hole towards you, spray nozzle away from you. Uh, that way, if you're holding it down like this, it's not going to spit out or spit down because um, you fill this up too much you got the breathing hole in the wrong spot it's going to spit uh, so this is the proper way to do it breathing hole towards you spraying away from you uh, and then spray it so that's it here we go okay so i still got a little time on this i'm going to go ahead and blow dry it try to speed it up just a little i don't think it's quite fully cure uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and blow dry okay so this is dried off. It's not real sticky anymore. Uh, it's gonna hold just fine. So now we're gonna sand it down. Okay, I've got my 80 grit sandpaper hooked to the vacuum. Just gonna sand this down, feather out these edges. Try not to take too much off the center, keep that girth. Uh, you do like the strength of it, so you don't like sand it down too much, uh, but then feather out those edges. Okay, so you see how it's not perfectly smooth. There's still little dimples and stuff like that. We're going to get that with the finish putty. So, um, edges are feathered out pretty good. I'm actually going to hit this spot one more time real quick. So, I'm going to do that off camera and then we'll get to the finish putty. Uh, now we're on to the finish putty. Um, using the same cream harder, uh, you'll have a, a larger tube than this, but um, same thing, you know, same way, sure, really. Just doesn't take much. Well, I walk. Well, I'm just going to stir it up. It'll be kind of a nice green color. And you'll be sure to be, be stir it all up kind of real well. And then I always like to fold it over. You know, they try to clean off your spread of how you got some left on the spread of either. Want it to be a pretty consistent green color. And this is going to be one more than enough for sure. And um, this would only be a fraction of what you've got in the kit. Now this, you do want to spread on. Make sure it's real smooth. It's going to be a lot easier to smooth this out. Uh, than it was the glass probably so uh, you just want to be sure to cover up all those edges and um, just try to get a real smooth this isn't this isn't necessary for durability this is more for cosmetic looks um, but this is going to sand a lot smoother and then that's the image okay so I feel pretty good about that I'm going to go ahead and clean off my spreader a little acetone and I'm just gonna just clean that up a little bit. It didn't do too bad a job getting on the outsides there. And I'm just a touch this thing up my spray. Yeah, just keep it clean, you know. It's gonna make your life easier, that's for sure. Okay, done with that. 
We'll let that set up for about 15 minutes. I'll probably blow dry it, uh, try to make sure it sets up good, but about 15 minutes, make sure it heats up. The blow dryer will help with that. Now, when I say I'm gonna blow dry it, I'm not, I'm not just baking this thing. I'm just warming it up. I'm not baking it, okay? So don't bake it. Okay, long as I have is, you know, right now this feels warm. I've warmed it up with the blow dryer. Um, you, you want this to cool off. Um, it does feel like it's set up, um, but go ahead and let this cool off to back to room temperature. Uh, get that full cured. It's only been about 10 minutes probably at this point, so just want to let you know about that. Okay, so I've got my 120. Always saying this with the 120. Uh, hooked to my back end, just keep it clean. Feather out the edges, um, and just really want a smooth finish here. So take your time. Don't, don't go too hard if you're using your orbital sander. Uh, it can really eat through this stuff. So, uh, here we go. all smoothed out, wiped down, dust free. So now we're using a light bulb primer. It's a little gold solution, doesn't take much. Um, kind of looks like dog pee. <laughs> but it's uh, it's just to promote the adhesion of the coating that we're gonna spray on there. So you just wipe it on there. You just want it to kind of dry a little bit. You don't want it to look wet when you spray it. So I'm um, gonna give that about 30 seconds and then I'm gonna spray it. Okay, so I, I'm going to hold this back about 12 inches or so uh, and just kind of fog it on itself. And then in between, I'm going to dry it for about 30 seconds. It's called flashing off. It's where the reducer evaporates out of the solution. Um, so you'll, it'll kind of start to look a little drier. Uh, you want to do that in between each coat. Uh, so here we go. Okay, also, always be wearing your respirator throughout the entire project. Um, I've been bringing mine down uh, just to talk but then I put it back on um, especially spraying you want to have your respirator on the fins can get pretty strong so uh, just wear respirators Okay, now I'm gonna blow dry this. Now don't be right up on it, just baking this thing. I'd be back a little bit and just, you know, lightly blow drying it. You know, you can blow dry it on high, but just don't be right up on it baking this thing. So I noticed here that I got it a little thick on the first pass. So be aware of that. If you're getting it a little thick on the area, try not to get it too thick too fast. It'll start to drip. Now, if it does start to drip, you can take a paper towel, fold it up, you know, kind of like this. Get that real wet with acetone and then just dab it. Lightly dab it. you got to get this real wet with acetone and lightly dab it. That's going to help you uh, fix a drip. Now, once you get a drip, uh, the finish may not be absolutely perfect, but this will help a lot.
there so that's building up nicely now what I'm going to do on this last coat is I'm going to get a good coat there but I'm also going to kind of feather out the edges so kind of watch how I do that cure for 24 hours I'm gonna come back I'll feel it if there's any rough areas I'll wet sand with the finished sand paper that you have um, I'll wet sand with that kind of knock down any rough areas uh, and yeah go from there that's it that's how you repair a hole that's the large wall repair kit uh, it'll handle that it'll handle a lot bigger ones too so anyway get it at the tub repair store.com Okay, now I want to talk about if your pre-valve gets clogged, uh, this is how you need to, you need to clean out your pre-valve, uh, re add a reducer to your solution, uh, and try it again. So here's how you clean out your pre-valve. You could also do this at the end of your project uh, to save this pre-valve, because you'll probably have a lot left. Uh, you can use it for other things if you want. Uh, but here's how you would troubleshoot clogged pre-valve. So just watch this. Okay. Now if you're troubleshooting a clock rebound, you're going to take this, set it off to the side, um, add some reducer to it, maybe a quarter ounce, a little bit, uh, kind of thin that down a little bit, move on. Okay, so I'm done with this, so I'm actually going to dump it out, uh, but if you're, if you're dealing with a clog one, you would add reducer a little bit to it to thin that down. So I'm just going to take the acid time. We clean that up. Take. I'll finish that up for a Now, if you were if you were dealing with a clogged pre valve, take that strong off. Just start like that. Spray acetone three with straw, make sure that's clear. But they, you know, you might have some thickened resin or something in there. Uh, so just make sure that's clear. Um, the next thing you do is take this cap off and spray acetone through the back side. Yeah, so it's coming out the tip here. And you see it come out of the top. Uh, give it a few sprays. Now, guard this back side. The backside can spit back at you. And okay, so that's all clear. Now you can reassemble it. You've added a reducer to your solution, start it up, then get down, uh, and then try it again. Okay, that's who are going to work. If it doesn't work, you can go to O'Reilly's or AutoZone and buy another pre valve. If you have to do that, contact us. You're whatever they wish you've got.